every night before I switch off for the evening, I write a to-do list for the next day. Nothing special there. However, over the last year, I've noticed that aside from the unique things that I have planned for the next day, I'll write down the same six mundane tasks that I try to do every single day. I find that if I do all six of these little chores, I guess is the best word for it, that I tend to have a much better day. I feel more organized, more grounded. If I achieve nothing else, it's still a reasonable day if I can do these little tasks. Here's what they are. Aside from, you know, life, my daily to-do list always includes the following. Feed the cat and empty the dishwasher, shower, brush, floss, and moisturize, take fish oil and fiber supplements, spend some time tidying up, train for 45 minutes, then before bed, it's the usual nighttime routine. I undertake these tasks every single day. So why do I bother writing them down? The answer is dopamine, my favorite chemical. This is how I write my notes. Windows has this little app called To Do. It's a very basic app for making to-do lists. The reason I like it is because it plays this lovely little sound when you check an item off the list. That little sound that Microsoft added into the app makes the whole process of checking something off a to-do list so much better. It's amazingly effective. I am way more likely to complete boring, menial tasks if I somehow connect them to a reward sensation. The reason I write these tasks down on a to-do list is not because I'll forget them. It's solely for the satisfaction of checking them off the list. I'll do the boring task just to check it off the list. Weird, right? I wanted to double down on this concept because doing these six little chores was really working for me. I felt more grounded, more organized. I felt like I got my together. I figured I could reinforce that work reward connection even further by adding haptic feedback to the experience, something more physical. Actually, Simone Yates has already had this idea. She created a 365 button calendar, one for each day of the year. However, I need a six item to-do list every day. Here's what I came up with. I'd make a little box, something that can sit on my desk with switches and lights for each of the six tasks. You know, like a switchboard from a plane or something, something with a real click. Then when you complete all the tasks, a light at the top turns green. So this needs to provide a real tactile response and give a better reward sensation than a software alternative. It should have six reminders with little icons too. I got to work creating this thing. At first I thought I could build it out of wood, but I have no carpentry or woodworking skills at all. What I do have is a knowledge of CAD. I learned to use the free browser-based CAD software from Onshape for my 3D printing episode of Learn Quick a few years ago. This would give me a way to design and visualize the box. My idea was to design a simple shape that could be laser cut. That way it would just glue together. The company I used to cut the piece also offered laser engraving. And because I have a basic knowledge of Illustrator from when I learned to make graphics for my browser game, I was able to knock up some simple icons for each of the six tasks. They turned out pretty cool. Next, electronics. I've learned a fair bit of programming from videos I've done in the past. So using an Arduino, I wrote a simple program that reads the position of switches and lights up the corresponding LED. Soldering all the parts together was easy, but again, a very basic knowledge of circuitry and soldering from when I assembled my own guitar made this possible. Once the whole thing was assembled, this gave me a working circuit and prototype. So as you complete each of the six tasks, you flick the switch. The light turns from red to green, and once they are all completed, it displays a little animation. This little sequence upon completion, that's a hundred lines of code. The next day, you flick the top switch and it reverses all the lights and begins a new day. Nice. However, there are some issues. 
first of all, the box is too small. It's too fiddly to use and I totally misjudged the size of the battery which doesn't actually fit inside the box. With this size of battery and using an Arduino, it only lasts one day before it needs recharged. Not very practical. The LEDs are way too bright. In the evening, it looks like a spacecraft is taking off from my room. There's too much space here between the joints, I could reduce the tolerance here. But the worst problem is it's too light, it's not sturdy enough. When you flick one of the switches, it tends to lift off the ground. Back to the drawing board it was. This is what I came up with for version 2. To solve the issue of robustness, I decided to make it much bigger and out of stainless steel. This now accommodates an obscenely huge 20,000 mAh battery and the brains have been replaced with this tiny little chip that just sips power compared to the Arduino. This means I get a full week before it needs recharged, but to be honest, I mostly just leave it plugged in. And it really works. When there's one red light remaining, it really is very persuasive. The most likely one is the one that reminds me to clean up, but it's really easy to just see that light and do 30 or 40 minutes of cleaning, flip the switch down, and then you get a green light. It just works. Toggling the reset switch in the morning the next day really does feel like you're starting on a clean slate. The reason for making this video is not to claim I've reinvented the to-do list, but rather to show how you can pull a bunch of different seemingly unrelated skills together on occasion for a project. This was a personal project, but I do this all the time with work. A tiny capability in electronics or programming or sound engineering is so useful for what I do. Individual skills in different areas can be greater than the sum of their parts. If this theme really resonates with you, then I think longtime supporter of the show, Skillshare, is really worth checking out. They sponsored this episode, and some of the skills discussed here, especially Illustrator, I learned on Skillshare. As you may know, Skillshare is a platform and community specifically built around learning. And I have three classes on Skillshare that I teach that I would encourage you to check out. A Rubik's Cube class, which teaches you to solve the cube the most intuitive way, a guitar fundamentals class that gets you playing songs as fast as possible and a how to learn class about learning in the most efficient way. What Skillshare classes provide over free tutorials online is quality, clarity and brevity. No more crappy audio and awkward camera angles. The classes are arranged in chapters to allow you to navigate at your own pace and provide accompanying resources like PDFs which you can print out to aid your learning. A few excellent classes to check out are Thomas Frank's Productivity class and Jordi Vandeput's Premiere Pro Editing class. But there are tens of thousands of others covering a huge range of topics. So here's the deal. Viewers of this channel can get two months of Skillshare Premium for free using the link in the description. That gives you access to all of the classes on Skillshare. However, that link is only available to the first 1,000 people. Usually an annual subscription to Skillshare Premium works out at less than 10 bucks a month. So go on, use your two months, absorb as much information as you can, learn some new skills or brush up on some old ones. Thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring the video and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.